What's up YouTube? It's Tyler Yamauchi here coming at you with a new episode. We're going to be talking about the Iron Cross, three exercises you should be doing that you're not to get it. Alright, let's go. in the Iron Cross. I get it. It's cool. It's probably the most iconic gymnastic move of all time. Who the heck am I to tell you what to do? Well... Oh yeah, I used to hold a world record in the Iron Cross, which means I'm pretty darn good at it. Now, I'm good at it for a few reasons. One of it is my body type was perfect for the Iron Cross. I've got abnormally short, short, short arms. So I was built for an Iron Cross. I started doing it when I was like 10, 12, playing around with it. Got it when I was like 13, 14, no problem. Probably the easiest skill that I ever learned strength-wise on rings, which is not normal. Totally not normal. However, I was a ring guy. That's what I did. You know how many ring guys have shoulder problems, elbow problems, all this stuff, their surgeries? I got none of it. I'm good. I mean, I'm a physical therapist. I know what I'm doing now, but back then I didn't. But there were some exercises that I did that I figured out really helped build my iron cross strength. All right? And I'm going to give you these tips and tricks. But before we go there, there's a few things that might help you that aren't related to these exercises. Rule number one, if you want iron cross, you got to train it, right? Uh, they've got these two things. One is just called Iron Cross Trainer. It's perfect to save your elbow. Also, the ring thing, okay? Power Monkey started it. We also called it just the dream machine growing up as a kid. I'll put the links below in the bio. But these types of things, if you're real serious about it, this is a safer way to start doing it. Now, you got to know a little bit about the anatomy and what, what things we're trying to protect. The main two things are this, your elbows, and your shoulders. Those are the things that are taking the most force. You gotta have some straight arm strength, which I'll get into in a totally different video, but the three exercises I give you, we'll be working on it. The other thing is your shoulders. Your shoulders are holding your whole body up, right? And that leverage from your wrist all the way to your, your shoulder is very large, which means it's hard on your shoulders, but it's meant to be. You want it on your shoulders. You don't want it on the elbows, cool? So, to build up your shoulder strength, what muscle or muscles are you looking to build the most? And I'm gonna show you right now, all right? One second, one second, hold on. Hold on. So, you see this right here? Can you, can you get that? See this guy right here? This is your iron cross muscle. That was at least my iron cross muscle. When I did it, this is where I felt it and this was what was holding me up. So what? The heck is that? That's part of your pec major. You got your clavicular head, which is at the very top, right where your clavicle is. That can't be it. That can't be it, right? That's not it. It's your sternocostal head. And your sternocostal head is actually fairly large, but it's the top upper fibers of the sternocostal head. That's what you're trying to strengthen here, okay? This is what you want the most engage you want to build this up so how the heck do you do that i'm gonna show you so for the first exercise you're gonna want to use p-bars and make sure that they're adjusted to your liking you don't want to get hurt if you look at this exercise and it looks too hard then you probably shouldn't even be training an iron cross i don't think this exercise has a name we can call it a double dip just because it looks like you're dipping twice you dip down back forward then up you start off slow like this. On the forward part, that's when you're loading the sternocostal head of the pec major the most. Once you get the hang of it, you want to go as fast as possible. I usually do about a set of 10, maybe as I got stronger, 15 or 20. But that's it. This next exercise is great because anyone can do it. In the example here, 
I'm using 10 pounds. However, when I competed, I would use 25s. Pick a weight that works for you. That's challenging, but doesn't hurt the elbows. So right here in this example, I'm working the cross, but you don't have to stop there. You can shift down to Maltese. You can press up to plunge. And I like actually staying in these positions and not resting. That gets nice fatigue, builds up the shoulder muscles. When I go up top like that, technically it's a rest break. Now I'm starting to drop into it quicker with that weight. It makes it more similar to an actual gymnastics movement. However, by doing that, it's more advanced. So you'd want to start light and then work into this drop. There's no real time limit for this exercise, but you want to do it for probably around 30, 60 seconds. Just really get fatigued out. All right, and for our third and final exercise, you're going to need some rings because you're doing a cross. The first exercise here is basically a basic. You start here. If you can't do it, then this is where you start. Just a support hold, rings are turned out. We'll zoom in here. You can see that the elbows are straight, rings are turned out, body is hollow. Hold 10, 20, 30 seconds. If you can't do this, this is literally where you start. Once you get this down, you perfected it, it gets easier, you take a step back. I want to get some swing in this, all right? That swing adds momentum, so every time I swing through that bottom there, it becomes harder. I only move back a little, so it's not that tough but you have to go for 10 swings. So if you don't have a big swing, if you don't have a big jump, it takes you longer. So you're working a little bit more endurance, but that's what you need. Once you get the hang of it, you want a big swing. Look at this, step back, big jump, holding, staying tight. My elbows are still nice and tight and straight. Rings are turned out and I hold for 10 swings. This one is technically quicker because I'm swinging faster, but it's also harder. And that's it, man. Peace out. All right, so that's the end of the video. Those are the three exercises you should be adding in. If you do a cross, learning a cross, dream about a cross, add these exercises. They'll get you there. An iron cross is slow. I mean, we're talking about years and years and years. These things are not going to help you do it in a month. You can get better in a month, but you're not going to be doing an iron cross from nothing in one month. It just doesn't happen. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment below. Let me know if I'm full of it. Let me know if I helped you. Let me know if there's anything you want to know about. Cool? Let's see it.